Hello my friends! In this video I'll show you how easy it is to paint a village scene with a bridge. I did already the sketch of camera and now I am applying color for the sky. In my painting it's a bright summer day, we're gonna have uh, some flowers, they're blooming, uh, we're gonna have uh, very vivid colors. That's why when doing the sky my major colors will be white, blue and I will use just a hint of red. It's not a cloudy day, that's why I want to begin with a solid color and here I am paying attention on the sketch and I want to go around it. But also I want to add a little bit of texture to suggest some blue and white fluffy clouds. There are two things that are helping me a lot. First, it's my brush. This is a soft bristle brush and it's also a medium size. I would say maybe a size 4 or maybe a 5, but this depends on the brand because each brand has its own sizing. The second thing that is helping me is the fact that the support is wet. That's why first I am applying a very washed color layer and on top of this I will apply a thicker layer and the two layers will blend as I'm working on. Even if I am using only white and blue right now, the pink that is underneath will create a transparent look. If I wouldn't create that underlayer of pink and I would have used white and blue from the beginning, the sky will be too cold. But like this, with the pink, it gives a little warmth. And I like that effect. Let's move on to the houses. We have seven of them, so we will begin here with a partial view of a house. And for all the um, houses we're going to use the same colors. We're going to use white, yellow, red and just a little bit of brown, not too much because as I said before this is a bright and sunny day and uh, every surface will reflect the sunlight. For each house I will follow the same steps. First I will place the shadow and second I will fill the entire surface of the house with uh, a gradient of color. I don't want to put one uniform color from A to Z. I want to keep some texture on the house and of course I'm going to do a darker line on the top and that will be the roof. So here I'm gonna do the roof first. It's a little too yellow, that's why I want to come on top of it with a more brown look. This will be the wall that will separate the two facades of the building. This will be darker and the other one will be a little brighter. So that we will have the two surfaces separated. I want this second house to be brighter so I will use more white and just a hint of yellow. The top should be brighter so I apply just simple white. I'm wiggling it down. 
these are old houses so there's not gonna be a one color everywhere i want them to have their own character so this house will will have uh, areas that are yellow areas where the brick it's more aged so for this uh, the color is going to be very textured The bottom it's darker than the top so I'm applying more brown here and it's blending with the other colors. Moving on house number three. First we will start with the roof and here it's a wiggle line with a red brown. And I will put an accent on the other roofs too, so they can all look as part of the same picture. And now I want to define this part more. And I will put a very strong dark accent here. Of course, it's not gonna remain like this. I will blend it and I will make it look uh, better. But I want to put my um, my marks where I want the shadow and where I want the light and of course I will fill the facade Same as the other houses, I have to put a darker accent. This time I want to create separation in between this house and the house that is on front. So with a stronger accent, I'm going to do the bottom part and then I will blend the color with the other ones. The fourth house, it's somewhere in the back. We're not seeing too much out of it because it's covered by the other house and by the bridge. We see only a little bit and a little of this roof now. As usual, I have to define the corner of the houses and since I have uh, some white on my brush, why not applying a accent on the right corner. Before I move on to the other side, uh, I want to put an accent here on the bridge. But this brush is giving me hard time, so I change my brush. I have a thin brush and things are going much better with this.
For the fifth house, the steps are exactly the same as the other ones. First, it's the roof. Then I want to apply some accents if it's the case or some shadow. But on this particular house, because it's far in the back, I want to put a grayish undertone. So first I apply my patch of gray and after that I am blending with the rest of the color. The other side will receive a lot of bright light. That's why I applied the yellow, but of course I'm not going to leave it yellow. I will blend it with other colors. To create more uniformity with the other side, I am putting darker uh, brown here and I am mixing with, uh, with the white that I did before. House number six. For this, I will do the exact same thing that I did in the past, but this time I will move a little slower because I want to pay attention to the contour here where it's meeting the bridge. And also I want to pay attention on the upper side where it's meeting the roof. This is where we see the most amount of roof, but with all of this, we're going to use the same colors and the same technique. The colors are brown, yellow, and red, and the technique is working in big patches with big strokes. Now, moving on to the facade, I'm going to use first the same color as I used on the roof. And here I'm just putting a straight line. Maybe you're wondering, yes, but how can I make a straight line? The easiest way to do it is to respect the sketch that we did before and to work slowly and to try to stay as much as possible on the line that we draw before. That's what I did. Now with all of this, if you're still not happy with the way the straight line turn, um, you give it a few moments to dry and after it's completely dry, you redo the line until it looks better. That's what I want to do here. I'm not very happy with the way this line turned. So after I let it sit for a while to dry completely, I am reshaping that edge. And now the last house. If you are painting this, um, you can rearrange, you can redesign the houses, you can uh, choose to leave this one completely off. It's uh, totally up to you. So with this 50% of the painting, it's done. Now it's time to move on to the bridge. After that, we will do a water underneath and some uh, sort of plants on each side with flowers. My bridge is gray and what I'm doing now, I'm covering everything with this color. 
the greatest challenge here is to stay inside the lines and i have to admit the brush that i'm using here it's uh, not the best for what i'm doing but because this is what i have handy that's what i'm using now but i would advise you if you have a uh, small brush this will be the time to change it because you don't want to um, to cover the beautiful lines and the beautiful buildings that we just did and we have to work around it um, you've seen me earlier adding a uh, big patch of yellow the bridge is not going to be yellow i'm going to use it mostly as an undertone to make my gray warmer and uh, to give it a little bit of a uh, uniformity with the rest of the, uh, the landscape I like this uh, negligent look on the bridge so I'm gonna have areas that are darker some that are more yellowish some that are brighter because when I will apply texture that will make some of the tiles look uh, darker and some other look brighter but in the same color family it's never too late to do a good thing so i've changed my brush and with white only i want to apply texture on the bridge first i am uh, drawing little lines curvy they're gonna go up down on all the directions small square little square triangles every kind of shape that I can possibly think of and with this pattern I will fill the entire bridge another thing that will look great here it's brick texture if you want to go for that first you will draw the horizontal lines and here you go according to the size if you want bigger bricks then the lines should be more distance to each other if you want smaller one then you do it more close to each other and after you're done with the horizontal you put the verticals and here if you want to stack up the bricks one on top of each other then you do the vertical uh, a line continuous but if you want to alternate the bricks then you alternate the lines too or and this is the easiest option leave the bridge as is and then you can um, decorate the bridge with uh, vegetation later on when we do the next step you can add some plants uh, hanging over the bridge that will look good too
With blue, I want to define the waterline and I want to paint the sky behind the bridge. We will see a little blue in, which, in each one of the arches. This is the second one here. Uh, okay, I'll fix it. And just like this. And now the third arch. I'm using the same colors that I use when I did the sky. And just because I have the same color in my brush, I want to correct this line here. I want to go over it uh, again to make it look better. When it comes to windows, this is the area where we have the most liberty. We can place the windows anywhere we like to, we can put as many as we like to, and we can uh, create any shape we can think of. Here, just to keep things simple, I've chose to do them rectangular and for the beginning, I will fill each one of the windows with a layer of light blue. is a lot of detail work it's a lot of layers coming one on top of the other but the effect is worth that's why for the second layer i'm going to contour each window with a darker blue it almost look black but it's a mix of black and blue With the same color, I am adding a little accent on the roof, not everywhere, just here and there to create a little separation in between the facade and the roof. It looks more defined like this. Some structural elements on the window, I will add this with white. I'm going on the top of the window and on the bottom, just a short line. It will create depth. I'm going around each one of the windows and I also put a little accent on the inside and it looks like a plus here creates the um, the little decoration that the windows need to look better.
Let's add the water. For this, I'm using only white and blue. If you remember, when I painted the sky, I used a little pink undertone. This time, I'm not going to use any kind of undertone because I want the water to be straightforward blue. The water will be in the middle and on each side we're going to put plants and vegetation and flowers. But first, uh, I want to define the edge where the water will be. And this will be under the bridge. As you can see me, I am moving back and forth with uh, long uh, strokes because I want to suggest the waves. So you're going to see me brushing around uh, on each side. This will be the darker side where the water it is. It will be covered some of it with plants. And I'm just wiggling my brush. These are the waves here. We don't have to be very precise because the water will go in every direction and of course the water will also have reflections. This is the horizon line and I want to create some distinction in between the sky and the water. That's why I want to be a little darker than the sky. For the shores, I will apply a layer of dark brown. In order to get this color, I mix the brown with blue. And that's how I got this intense dark. With this, first, I will shape the shores. I want to define the areas where it's water and where it's not water. And I know while it looks a little scary to put this darker color at once, I want to assure you that this is not going to stay like this. It will um, have more layers added later on. And having a dark uh, layer underneath will make the color pop up more. It dried a little bit. Now as an accessory, I can add a few poles here. This is um, if you want to add it. If you don't want to add it, it will look fine without it anyways. And uh, as I mentioned before, you can add some vegetation uh, hanging there. So if we do if you do choose to put flowers and leaves and all those stuffs then uh, those uh, poles are totally unnecessary
And this is the final step, adding vegetation. And for this, first I want to establish where each plant, where each bush will stay. For example, here we're going to have two bushes and the vegetation will go, will extend a little and it will have some more, let's say here and um, more, let's say uh, here. When adding vegetation, we will have to add two or three layers. But first, we will have to position the plant. We will say, okay, this is a green area. So just a brush stroke, sometimes it's enough to say this is green. Some other time will have to be a wiggle, sometimes um, a little uh, dot with green. It depends on how far or how close the area is. But overall, we need to define first where the vegetation is. After we are done with the, that step, we'll have to somehow think of the shape of that plant. If it's a bush, if it's uh, something with flowers, if it's something that it's far and we see only an accent or if it's something closer where we will see a lot. And after we're done with that step too, we can add the accessories and the extras, some leaves if we see some branches or flowers. On the left shore, we will do the same thing. We will start with little strokes. This is a bush right here. It's far away from us. Uh, it will have some leaves, some sticks over here. And uh, I'll go more with this bush. This is the shoreline. And you will have some vegetation that will um, that is closer and it will cover some of the water and more plants on the edge. With white, I'm adding some accent. This will be some big leaves. They're, um, they're staying there and will, will look like a, uh, a plant that has grown and the leaves are hanging down in the water. And few accents here and there.
For more shadow, I'm using a darker blue and I'm putting a few leaves that are closer by and we can see only the tip of that, that plant and on the other side another plant that is similar and let's put some plants here Um, I don't want to put too many dark accents, but this will enhance the brightness of the white that we did before. So with a very soft line, we're going to put a few shadows. And here under the bridge, it will be an area that has reflections. For this, I'm using a darker blue. Of course, the color will blend and you will go from the bright to the dark and will create some interesting transitions. And here under more, more lines. And let's put some more over this area the same thing few lines here and there it's mostly a zigzag line uh, i want to enhance it and to put more dark lines With water, the most important things are, of course, the waves. But this time of um, this water doesn't have any waves at all. And um, in order to suggest the texture, we will use very small lines. And we will use white, we will use uh, darker uh, blue. And we will come in several layers and we will adjust those little strokes until it looks nice, until we have those uh, little areas of shadow defined and until we will have the reflection also in place so you can see me adding a layer of blue right now to um, adjust the shadow that I did before I want to suggest the the shadow and even if it looks too much at some point I will come and I will drag it around until it looks mostly a shadow
When it comes to adding flowers to a landscape, I have to admit I like a landscape that are loaded with flowers. And um, I will go a little bit overboard here, but um, um, I want you to use your imagination and uh, to put flowers where you think you you need flowers if you if you choose to do that for me i am um, adding here a few flowers and i'm using those flowers that are uh, stuck up one on top of each other so you see only a line of beautiful flowers uh, here on the right side i want to add individual flowers uh, let's say those are poppies and I want to put them here and there. Now on this plant, this will be a bush and will be loaded with flowers. Uh, and we'll have some more bushes and more individual flower on the other side too. Now I am back with uh, with the blue and I want to put a few flowers here and uh, around the red area. You're not going to see it as a blue here. You're going to see it more of a white accent, but it's the same color that I use for the sky. Just a few little strokes here and there. It will suggest the shyness of the plants. Now I have proper white and I want to work on this area where I put the red before it will mix and will create little pink flowers. Black is important on every single painting. That's why here I will add some black and I will blend this black with the color that is underneath. This time it's that green. And I want to define the shape of those um, uh, bushes with flowers. The key when adding black is to make everything else stand. That's why if we're using too much, it's not good. If we're using too a little, it's not good either. Um, if you want to think of when you want to edit a picture, if you add a little bit of contrast and a little bit of black, then it will look good. It will look actually very good, but if it's too much, then you lose details. So that's my uh, focus here. I want to add black on the areas that I did before just to enhance it. As I was painting this, I was thinking in my mind, wouldn't it be great to put some birds on the sky? Yeah, it will. I don't want to make it too busy. But if you think that some birds will look good, feel free to do it. Also, if you want to add a boat or two or some people, some kids running around or some animals, anything you, you believe that it will look good, then feel free to do it. On my side, as I said before, it will be flowers, flowers, and even more flowers. That's why I'm gonna load my uh, my image with lots of plants and uh, lots of flowers. If you are watching my channel, you already know this. When we paint, it is very important to take a moment and to stand back. And to just look at everything that we did. This is the moment where we analyze and we balance what we did so far and what it's still missing.
And if there is an area that doesn't look good or um, something that it's uh, placed where it shouldn't be, and overall it gives us a feeling that that's not what I'm looking for, before ending and before finalizing a painting, it's the moment to do those little touch-ups. It's the moment of reviewing everything. And it's the moment to say, yes, I like this, I will keep it as is. This one, no, this one needs to be changed. So that's what I'm doing right now. I am looking um, everywhere and I want to make sure that what I did, it's good and it looks good together. And I feel that I need more accents in, in this area. And also I need more flowers with red here. Because they're too dark, I want to enhance it, adding some pink flowers. And I will add just little tiny dots here and there. And with the same color, with the same washed pink, a few flowers here. It will cover some of the bridge, but that's what I want to. And some blue flowers right here. With white accents. And why not adding more pink flowers? Of course, we will never have enough pink flowers. So that's why I floated my brush with a bright pink. And I'm going and applying more dots. This will be my pretty flowers. And there you have it. This is my landscape with a bridge in the middle. I hope you like it and see you next time with another fun project. Bye bye.